We are back here at the NVIDIA booth, the GPU Technology Theater, and I'd like to welcome our next presenter, Sam Clegg from Made with Marmalade. Take it away. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm on. Hi, uh, my name's Sam Clegg from Marmalade, and I'm here to tell you about how you can leverage your existing console development skills, your existing code, and your existing assets to build games for a variety of platforms, including those with the uh, NVIDIA Tegra chipset. So it's just me today. Nick Smith couldn't make it. But I'm going to be uh, showing you a short slide deck presenting Marmalade and how it works and what it does. And then I'm going to show you a demo of some content running on this uh, Sony tablet, which has got a Tegra 2 chipset. And then at the end, I'm giving away free t-shirts. And if you collect one of these cards here and you come to an another one of our presentations, then we're actually giving away free licenses to the SDK for one year. So um, it's worth grabbing one of these. And there's brochures and cards and stickers down here at the front as well. So Marmalade is a cross-platform development kit, essentially, that allows you to, with a single code base and a single binary, a single build, target multiple platforms. It's that simple. So you can access more app stores, make more money, generate more possibilities for your content. So the big, um, the big unique selling point is that we have this single-click deployment to multiple platforms based on a single game binary. You develop your code with normal C and C++. You can use all your existing tools, Visual Studio, Xcode, text editors, whatever you like to use. And then our tool chain compiles that to a single binary. You can reuse your existing code bases. So any code that is reliant on just POSIX and OpenGLES should compile with zero modifications. So lots of existing open source software, lots of existing game engines, lots of existing games port to Marmalade with very, very little effort. And then once you've ported your code and compiled it on Marmalade, we have a deployment tool that packages your game binary with your assets into a package for Android, iOS, Symbian, BADA, LGTV, BlackBerry Playbook. Uh, and we add more and more platforms all the time. Um, we also remove platforms. like We support WebOS, but that seems to be going away now. Um, but each year, we tend to add at least one or two new platforms. And when new platforms come along, all your existing content goes to the new platforms transparently. So we actually deploy existing binary content onto new platforms as they emerge. So this is not new technology. It's been around for at least five years. I've been working on it for that long myself. Uh, many of the world's biggest publishers use us to publish mobile content across multiple platforms. Uh, and it's not just the big publishers. We have lots of independent developers, uh, tens of thousands of active users right now. Uh, some of the big games that you might recognize are, that have been made with Marmalade are Call of Duty on iPhone, uh, Lara Croft uh, from IDOS, uh, Backbreaker from Natural Motion, and Need for Speed Shift from EA. Um, there's many, many more I could mention. But there's one, one that I'll mention that was a big success story this week. If you guys have an Android phone or an iPhone on you right now, you can go to the App Store and you can see that the number one paid and the number one free app on both stores is the same app, and it's called Draw Something. And that was made with Marmalade. It was a, a big success story for just a couple of developers. It's like a little Pictionary type game that's just uh, gone viral in the last couple of weeks. And that's like an example of a 2D game built with Marmalade. So the main reason that we exist is because we've been developing mobile content for maybe more than 10 years now. And we've ha had to struggle through the complexities of the cross-platform problem, uh, the different SDKs, um, the different devices, the fragmentation. And um, anyone who's done mobile development on more than one platform will know about these problems. Uh, multiple tool sets, multiple devices, multiple firmwares. Uh, and you end up with a code base that's full of like if defs for different platforms and essentially fragmented code base or a branched code base with different builds for different devices. Um, it, it's a big mess. Uh, and we've been in that mess. So for the last five years, 
we've been building this technology that, that we think solves it. So we provide unified tools, uh, we remove the device fragmentation problem, and we provide you guys with a final unified code base that you can use to target all devices. So the first thing we do is that we say you don't need to install any platform SDKs. So you can target Android without installing anything from Google. You can target iPhone without the iPhone SDK. All you need is just one SDK, and you can target all of these platforms. We, we've uh, got the ability to build iPhone games directly on Windows, so you don't need a Mac. The SDK runs on both Mac and Windows, but you can do everything from either. So if you like Macs, you can do everything on a Mac, and if you like Windows, you can do everything on Windows. No need to even have a Mac in your office. Um, a lot of these games that I showed you were developed purely on Windows and have been number one on the iOS store. So you can use your favorite tools. We don't uh, mandate that you use a certain tool set. You can use your favorite editors, IDEs, uh, and you can use your favorite platform, as I say, Mac or Windows, or we have a Linux SDK um, in a private beta if you're interested. So the result is that you end up with a unified code base um, that doesn't have any platform dependencies. So in Marmalade, it's actually impossible to make a build that just runs on one platform. You can't make an iOS-only build. Uh, uh, in, in the code, there's no way to detect what you're running on until runtime. So you can't have if def iPhone in your code. It's literally uh, impossible. Uh, we provide the common language on all platforms, so you only need to know C and C++. Um, there's no need to learn any Java, no need to learn any Objective-C. Uh, so all your existing console code uh, is easily portable over. Uh, when, when you've got your unified code base, we provide, as I say, a tool that lets you immediately deploy to all platforms with a single click. So the device fragmentation problem, uh, we, we work around this by providing you guys with an, a platform abstraction layer that behaves identically on all platforms, on all firmware versions. So we remove all those idiosyncrasies, those pain points that you have to deal with to do with things like suspend and resume, incoming text message, phone call, how, how do you handle all these like uh, differences between the OSs and differences between the devices. Um, we're constantly updating the SDK to handle more and more of these edge cases so that you don't need to. Uh, and because new devices come on the market uh, literally every week, we provide an updated SDK weekly with new fixes for new devices. We also provide a desktop simulator which you can do most of your development in. We provide x86 simulation, which is the easiest form of debugging. And then we also provide ARM debugging on the desktop using QMU. So you can actually do assembly level debugging of your game without a device at all, which means the number of, de number of bugs that are on device only are, is very close to zero. Very, very close. <laughs> So how does it work? Well, um, normally when you're targeting a device, you target the OS with, the, with its drivers and you target the OpenGL ES driver. Um, but these, are, these all vary widely. Uh, and uh, um, even within a, a particular device, different firmwares will vary. So you have to build a layer that deals with those complexities. So that's what we've done. We've built this cross-platform layer that your application will target that is uh, consistent across all devices. On top of that, we've built uh, standard C and C++ libraries. So you have POSIX, you have um, STL, you have standard OpenGLES with EGL. Um, and we guarantee that EGL works on platforms where EGL doesn't even exist. So from your point of view, you just have a set of standards. Then on top of that, because it's a standards-based layer, you can, we've ported already all of these uh, standard pieces of middleware. So for physics, you've got Box2D, Bullet, ODE. Um, you can bring your own physics engine, of course, because we're standards compliant C. Uh, you can also use a scripting language. You can embed Lua in your application. You can embed Python. You can embed Ruby. You can embed Mono. Any of those runtimes that are written in C++ can be compiled on top of Marmalade. And then you can use those in other languages uh, as a scripting language for your game. So the two that we provide on uh, our GitHub are Lua and Python, but, you, uh, but I've also done Ruby. I've got V8 running, so you can have JavaScript if you want. And there's lots of other uh, open source and commercial libraries that have been ported already. 
SQL Lite, FreeType, Image Magic for image uh, transformation. Scaleform is a commercial Flash implementation that runs on Marmalade. And then many more you can find on our GitHub accounts. Uh, I think the last count there was like 80, 80 modules that have been ported. And most of it, it, it's not really porting, it's just compilation. So um, very, very rarely do you have to actually modify the code to these libraries. So there's the standard library layer with all the, all the middleware that you could, you could want. Uh, oh, we've got a couple more things here. We've got Cocos 2D, which is a 2D game engine, and Shiva 3D, which is a 3D game engine that also uh, have been ported to Marmalade. Then if you want it, we have, have an internal, we have an internal technology for building 3D games called Marmalade Studio. That's completely optional, and you can, you can use it if you're building new content. But if your content is existing already in C++ with your own engine, you probably don't want to use that, and you probably just use your own, continue to use your own engine. So there's all your choices of middleware on top of the basic layer, and then finally your application. And everything above, this, everything above uh, Marmalade's system here, everything the yellow line and above, is built into a single binary. And then uh, at deploy time, when you finish building your game, you combine it with the Marmalade system for the particular platform, uh, and that's all done automatically for you, and it's packaged into a, <coughs> into a package file that runs on the device that you're trying to target. So we, we can produce APK files, uh, sys files, IPA files, like all of the different packaging formats for different devices. Um, and the first question that most developers have about this is, well, what happens when you want to like access some part of the operating system that hasn't been exposed already by Marmalade? So a couple of years ago, we developed this EDK, the Extensions Developer Kit, which allows you to, if you really need to, dig down into the OS and actually call functions that we don't expose. So if there's a new input type, um, say, uh, say a new kind of compass or gyro that we haven't exposed yet, you can actually build your own extension to Marmalade uh, and query for that at runtime. So it's still a single binary, just queries, for run queries at runtime for given extensions and uses them when they're available. So the idea basically is that you end up with a game that is not dependent on a particular device, but dependent on certain features, like I need an accelerometer and I need a big screen. And so instead of, instead of targeting iPad, you would target any device with a touch screen. Uh, that's, that's kind of the idea. Uh, there's more, I'm, this slide has lots of detail about the EDK, which I'm going to skip over because it's not particularly relevant, but that's how the EDK works. <laughs> Okay, so the ecosystem that we have of partners is quite broad. We've partnered with many different uh, providers of uh, statistics, networking, um, 3D engines, uh, all, all kinds of uh, physics providers. Um, it, most middleware providers that you've heard of, uh, could, you can probably find um, a port to Marmalade e existing already. And then for the open source middleware, of which, because we're C++, there's literally thousands of modules that you can choose from, and some of them have been ported already on our GitHub account. So I'll end with a couple of case studies of people who've used um, our SDK. First of all, this is Konami, who built Pro Evolution Soccer, and they, bought, they used it Marmalade to bring the game to iOS and Android, and they've done three iterations of this game using Marmalade in the last couple of years. Um, and been very successful. And this second is uh, Hotgen, who are an indie, ga indie game company who um, do this 2D game called Tofu and Tofu 2. Um, also iPhone, Android, but also Playbook, um, and I think a few other platforms as well. These guys have gone across all, most of our platforms with this uh, 2D, 2D game, uh, which is very popular on iOS as well. And as I mentioned, we're constantly adding new platforms. So the main thing that we do is iterate and add new platforms uh, and add support for new devices as they come on the market. So um, this year, we've got coming up support for deploying straight to the Windows desktop and the Mac desktop. So you can be in the Mac App Store as well as the iOS App Store. Um, we're also looking at Google's native client for um, deploying direct into the browser. So you can play your games in the browser as well. Um, what we've got more smart TV platforms, so we already have support for LG TV, and we've got other, other vendors of smart TV we're going to be supporting too. Um, think set-top boxes like the Roku, and anywhere where you can see an ARM chip, 
um, with 3D acceleration, you can expect to see Marmalade running. But some of the new things we've added is support for native UI elements. So you can actually draw native UI checkboxes and uh, Android scroll bars from within our um, abstraction layer. And of course, there's many more platforms on the way that we can't talk about here. So um, before I give out t-shirts, any questions about the SDK, how it works, what you can do with it? No? OK, so uh, anyone who wants to grab a t-shirt, I've got different sizes. Um, and if you grab one of these cards, then uh, you can come to our booth and get a free SDK license for a year if you're interested in using it. And there's brochures here as well. And if you want to ask me any questions, I'm going to be uh, around the corner on the NVIDIA pod here, and you can chat to me, and, or you can just chat to me now.